Great. We'll start off with Greg Logan from Newsday. Uh, Steve, uh, what are you, you, you've talked about uh, the lineups that you haven't gotten to use very much, you know, with Blake and, and Nick with the big three. Uh, what are you planning to do uh, with your two centers uh, when you get the chance to have everybody available? Um, well, I mean, you know, it, it's not going to be that much different than it's been recently. You know, they're all going to share minutes. Uh, we got Blake, we got Nick, we got Jeff Green. Uh, certain matchups or, or times we have TJ as well. So um, they'll all get their, their opportunities. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Coach, kind of following up on that, I, I feel like Tristan Thompson is a unique type of matchup in terms of just offensive glass type of cleaning in the, in the paint. Does that lead you to maybe lean towards playing DJ in those types of physical matchups down there? It's possible. You know, it's, you know, he is a, a priority. His, his offensive rebounding is elite. So is Williams. So it, it is a key for us to, to limit their offensive rebounds. Ryan Dunleavy with the New York Post. Steve, I've got two for you. Jeff, Jeff Green, uh, you obviously played against him when he first came in the league. How important has he been for this team and how remarkable is it that he's still going after, you know, that heart procedure early in his career? Well, Jeff's been, been great for us. I mean, he's been, uh, you know, his, his maturity and experience um, have been, I think, really important for our team throughout this year that's been, you know, uh, so difficult. In, in different ways. And then as a player, you know, he's kind of a, a, a Swiss army knife for us. You know, he can play on the perimeter. He can be a pick and roll guy. He can play the five in a small lineup. He, you know, can uh, do a lot of different things and, and guard different positions. So he's been really important and versatile for our team. And then for you, Steve, I mean, obviously as a player, you got pretty deep in the playoffs, but had a hall of fame career, but never got that ring as a coach. Uh, would that be the same for you as a player or is it, is it a little bit different? I think it's a little bit different. You know, for me, I really, I'm here to see these guys succeed and to try to give them the best opportunity to play their best basketball and, and go as far as they can and try to win a championship. That, that is, is uh, something that I find a lot of reward in and, and motivates me to, to work hard and to, to, lead, to lead this group. Tom Dowd, BrooklynNets.com. Hey, Steve, this was a historically efficient offense this season, even with, you know, the, the big three not getting a lot of minutes together. I mean, going forward, is there even another level this, this group can reach on that end? I think we definitely have room for growth. Um, you know, the playoffs obviously are going to make things even more difficult, though. You know, you, they're going to scout and you get in a series and they're going to try to take things away and they're going to scheme you. Um, the game can also slow down. There's more rest between games. So, you know, it should be more difficult in the playoffs, but can our offense improve under duress? Absolutely. You know, that's something that we haven't faced a lot of, you know, for us to get into a playoff series where we're having to, you know, play together at a really high level. We're having to think the game. We're having to, to make reads at a higher level. And that'll be important for our growth as well. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Steve. Um, this is twofold. I mean, obviously rotations kind of change series to series. Um, but I'm curious what your optimal rotation size would be, eight, nine, ten, or do you not even really know that yet? Well, I think, you know, you could pencil in nine or maybe ten, but you just never know. You know, who knows? Um, I think we'd probably start at nine, and, and if we need ten, we'd go to ten. But it, it's all – dependent on how the game goes, uh, what's happening from, from moment to moment, game to game, and, and what we need. So um, you don't want to go in with the idea of playing too many guys, but you also want to use as many guys as possible to, to uh, you know, make sure that there's um, an opportunity to, for, for the guys not to have to play so many minutes, uh, you know, start to finish. Back to Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, Steve, a couple of years ago uh, in the first round loss to the 76ers, they did a really good job of uh, taking Joe Harris away, you know, uh, covering him out high. Uh, do you anticipate something like that from the Celtics? You know, how, how critical do you think it is for opposing teams to, to try and shut him down? Well, I'm sure they don't want to give him any, any 
free looks. You know, he's one of the best shooters in our game. Uh, having said that, it's a little trickier when you have three guys out there that can break the defense down. Um, so, you know, that's the beauty of our team. While we have, uh, you know, we understand that we don't have a lot of time together or history together, we do have talent. And if we can make those pieces work together with fluidity and an understanding, you know, that, that that's the beauty of this roster and this team. But, you know, we got to build up. We got to get better all the time. We got to learn as we face this team and how they scheme us and how they defend us and be able to react, but also be able to adjust. Back to Brian Lewis with the post. Hey, Steve. Um, you mentioned that talent that you guys have, which is pretty apparent for everybody to see. It's probably a little unusual that a team comes in as, quote, unquote, the favorite or betting favorite when they haven't won. Um, do you hear all the, I guess, the outside chatter where you guys are, you know, viewed as kind of the, the bullies of the NBA or the, the villains of the NBA because of how the team was constructed? Do you hear that? Do you guys find it amusing? irritating entertaining i mean how do you guys process that we haven't really talked about it it's not something that i'm that aware of to be honest with you i hear it from you guys from time to time but uh i kind of go home and parent five kids after work so I, I don't have a lot of time to be here you know reading up on what people think about us um you know i think there's two schools of thought some people look at our talent and say well they got to be the favorites and other people look at our our team and say there's no way they can win because it's their first year together and they've only, their, their three star players have only played a handful of games together. So I could understand why people would come to the conclusion or predict both scenarios. The truth is none of that matters. It's about us and our journey and how we can come together, how we can continue to build, get better every day and, and hopefully grow throughout these playoffs. Back to Christian Winfield with the Daily News. Hey, Coach, kind of an offbeat question here, but it seems like Brooklyn has become kind of the smoothie capital of the NBA. It seems like every time we see a player in on the Nets, they have a smoothie in their hand. Are smoothies kind of like non-negotiables or are guys kind of gravitating in towards them and, and they like them? I would imagine the second, uh, since uh, I have not seen any mandates that you have to have a smoothie, but uh, I, I'm assuming they like them. So it's good. It's good. They're refueling. Thank you. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Steve, forgive me if, if you've been asked this before. I, I hopped on a little late. But um, you, you've talked a lot about Nick and his importance during the playoffs with his switchability, but also obviously it's his first time going through all this. I guess just how do you kind of balance that and, and be cognizant that he's he's going to be an important piece, but also this is his first time going through the playoffs in, in any setting because he was hurt last year? Yeah, you know, it's a, he's really a rookie. Um, so, you know, him going into the postseason with high expectations, uh, it's not easy. But at the same time with Nick – if he plays hard and uses his length and athleticism uh, and his activity, um, he's okay. We can allow him to make some mistakes. You know, our team should be good enough to allow him to make some, you know, inexperienced plays and still have an impact on the game because of his his profile. You know, we, we a guy that plays that hard is that long and athletic. You know, he he can do a lot of things and help our team in a lot of ways. And I think that we can suffer some mistakes out of him due to inexperience. Uh, because of his skill set but obviously it's something you have to monitor and as with every player and, and performances are, are constantly in flux and you try to judge who who deserves the minutes or who's the right for that matchup or that moment last question back to tom dowd brooklynets.com hey steve how significant has it been to what you guys have done or, or how you can deal with playoff defenses going forward just that you've got these three big scorers who have been so effective uh, as distributors and playmakers as well well, it's a, it's a luxury to have for sure. Um, having said that, you know, we, we still haven't faced, uh, you know, uh, a playoff series together. We haven't actually played, a, <laughs> we've barely played seven games together. So, you know, it, it is tricky. I mean, while the potential is there and while we will, you know, be able to, you know, let our talent take over at times, you know, when you know, when it comes to the playoffs, it's about execution, connectivity, you know, that, that competitive spirit collectively. And so those things are things we can control uh, as we go forward and, and hopefully suffer us, you know, a little or give us a little bit of time uh, to work through the kinks because of that talent. Um, so it, it there's by no means do I look at this and go, oh, we're so talented. We're just going to roll out there and, and win games. You know, you know, in the playoff details matter, you know connectivity, you know, uh, cohesion matters, you know, teams are going to throw a lot of different stuff at us, try to slow us down, try to make it difficult, try to give us different reads and we got to be able to adapt and adjust. And some of that, you know, is more difficult when it's fresh, you know, I haven't, you haven't seen it before, but 
these guys are capable, they're experienced, they're skilled, and, and they have the, the will to want to do it. So right now it's about us starting this journey, learning as we go, improving as we go, and putting ourselves in a position to win each night. Thank you.